Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Small Business Show. How are you doing, Dave? I'm all right, Shannon. How are you today? Good, good. good. I'm excited about the show today. We're, we have a, a, a unique, a very specialized uh, business with a super smart and enthusiastic uh, small business owner that I'm yeah. really interested in sharing her story with everybody. It's it, really u- cool. Unique is the right word. I I, yeah. I think eventually it, it they will have competition though. I, it, oftentimes, Probably. if you have a unique business, th- that's not necessarily a, a a good thing. If you if you realize you have no competition, that should give you some pause and and ask why is there no like why is no one else yeah it could trying, be no demand no right? demand not, right well, which should stop you in the beginning or it could and uh it could put a target on your back you're right yeah yeah for sure yeah, well yeah. yeah at best it puts a target on your back and i think here is best case scenario i think i think that's yeah that's the case and, here. I, and I think the, yep. the if you're thinking along those lines you need to think okay well how do we build this moat <laughs> around mm-hmm. us so where there's a, a a significant barrier to entry for others that come after us. And maybe that's the relationships that you build. Yep. Um, maybe there's a, some kind of cost structure that you've developed that would make it harder for someone else to to get in there. But it's definitely something to think about. And I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. So I'm, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Yeah. That's During great. the interview, I'm like, how come nobody's doing, there's people doing similar things. And, yeah. and so yeah. like, it's not, it's not completely alone on an Island, but it's, you know, it's, it's out, it's on a peninsula for sure. So yeah, yeah. it's cool. Really valuable very timely for you and I with our kids yeah. and uh, uh, this is a very valuable service. Very valuable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. I want to talk though about our first sponsor, which is PDF Pen 12. Uh, look, PDFs are a huge part of our world these days, right? It, you know, you and I are used to working from uh, remotely from our, I mean, it's not remote. Right. It's, it's, it's where we work. It's where our office is. So many uh, folks that we deal with though are newly remote and working from their homes and PDFs. I'm finding more and more things happening via PDF than, than even before. And before it was pretty high number while well, PDF pen 12 takes that PDF game and brings it to a whole other level. Uh, If you're on a Mac, it supports Mac OS Catalina. If you're on an iPad or an iPhone, it supports the latest uh, over there. It even supports Apple Pencil. One of the things that they added to PDF Pen in PDF Pen 12, though, is built-in DocuSign support. So you've always been able to add your signature and stamps and customized things to your PDFs with PDF Pen over the years. But now... It's integrated with DocuSign support so that if you're dealing with folks that want to use DocuSign, well, now you can kind of do your stuff with PDF pen and you're in great shape. Very cool stuff. You've got to check this out. Go to smilesoftware.com slash podcast. I know that sounds a little generic. It is. But on checkout and when you kind of when you're doing your thing, it'll ask you where you've heard about it. And of course, I think you know the answer to that. So check it out. Smilesoftware.com slash podcast. And our thanks to Smile and PDF Pen for sponsoring this episode. All right, man, I'm uh, I'm eager to uh, to share this with everybody. You good to go? So am I. Yeah, I'm totally ready. Let's do it. He is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton, and this is episode 278 of the Small Business Show. I think if you have like your, let's assume that you have your proof of concept, and you know you know that you're going to make some money from it, and that it's it's a valid idea. Um, I think the number one piece of advice is it's never going to be the right time. You know, you, some people might be sitting back saying, Oh, you know, I have my kid's birthday coming up. I really want to wait until after that. And then something else happens and then something else happens. And then next thing you know, it's five years later and you're stuck on this thing and it's, it kind of gets ahead of you. Um, so I think, you know, just don't wait until the right time to do something because it's never the right time. So our listeners may not know that both Dave and I have sons that just graduated high school uh, and are headed to college in the fall. You know, we, we talk all the time. We've both discussed the lengthy process and, you know, getting everything prepared to help our kids 
be successful when applying for and ultimately, you know, how to choose a school, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's been a bit more complicated with the COVID situation this year, certainly. <laughs> a Just bit a little more. bit. Yeah. Little my bit. son, my son has chosen a school that none of the four of us have ever even seen the city that it's in yet. So there oh you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so and just my son plays lacrosse. I mean, if you have an athlete that's trying to play, you know, NCAA sports, it can be even more difficult, uh, especially this year. So thankfully today we have the founder of LRT Sports, Kirsten Sires, as our guest. And LRT specializes in helping student athletes overcome challenges and find success wherever they land. Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really interested in learning about your business and your journey as a small business owner. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now with having to pick a school without even seeing what they're like and the campus and just everything else involved. So I definitely feel for you in that situation. And I've been hearing a lot of other similar stories with that as well. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, luckily, <laughs> luckily we son. saw, yeah, my son and I, we, we toured his campus about a year ago before mm. we were just up in the area. So uh, thankfully, you know, that was great. But uh, yeah. as I told one of the lucky son, ones. I, yeah. you know, he gets to, yeah, he, he basically had it narrowed down between one school that he had seen that's about an hour from home on uh, the East Coast here and one school that he hadn't seen that's, you know, uh, uh, clear on the other side of the country in Portland, Oregon. And, uh, and I told him, I said, well, kiddo, you get to decide. You, you get to pick what story you're going to tell in 10 years. Are you going to pick the safe school that, frankly, was going to cost a fortune? Uh, <laughs> or are you going to go, uh, you know, across the country and tell the story about how you picked the, the, you know, the unknown and how you made either one of those work? Like, you get to decide that either one of those is going to work out. You just get to pick which one you want to tell. And he's like, yeah, I think I want to go sight unseen. I'm like, That's All cool. Right. Good off you go, kiddo. That's good. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So hey, hopefully off he goes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so before we jump in to find out exactly what you guys do at LRT, uh, I want to talk about your experience uh, and your motivation for starting the company. I've, I've done a little bit of research, but I'd love for you to share a bit of it with our listeners today. Yeah. So my journey, especially with starting LRT Sports, was very unique. Um, it's unique in a way, but it's also not unique in a way. So if there's any, um, anyone out there that knows a student athlete or is a current or former student athlete, you know, it's one of those situations where you hear a lot of times an athlete goes to college and then they have a situation where they don't end up liking the school or the coach or the, you know, the coach ends up quitting or they don't know, uh, exactly what they got themselves into or whatever it may be. So for me in particular, I was recruited as a uh, tennis athlete at, to Skidmore College. Um, I was recruited to other schools as well, but Skidmore was the school that I fe felt that I loved the most. And when I got to campus, it was just a situation when uh, it was one of those things that I absolutely loved the school, but my coach and I didn't necessarily see eye to eye on a lot of different things. And I was kind of sold um, a little bit in my recruiting process that I wasn't necessarily expecting along the way. Um, again, you hear this a lot with student athletes. Go on your recruiting trip. You're kind of, a, everybody's a salesperson, student athletes, um, the coaches, the parents, and everybody wants everything to go well. And then once you step foot on the campus, it could be a wildly different situation. So um, I ended up playing my whole first year. We won our league championship. We made it to the NCAAs. Uh, well, and, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, and it, it was a great year as far as winning matches were concerned, but my just overall satisfaction with uh, my coach in particular, mental health, a lot of other things, wasn't great. So I had to make a decision, which was A, either stay on the team and probably not be super happy for the next three years after that, or B, quit and actually try out for another sport at Skidmore since I loved Skidmore so much. I dabbled around thinking about transferring, but they had this great business program that I just loved. Um, so I actually ended up quitting and trying out for the soccer team. And I made the wow. soccer team. So then I was a soccer athlete for my last three years of college and I didn't even play soccer in high school. I played growing up. Um, so it was definitely that's fascinating. Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Very unusual. And it was definitely a huge learning curve for me. Um, I went from playing like two games my sophomore year and those were games that, you know, we probably were getting blown out or vice versa. Um, and then I think by my senior year, I ended up playing in 17 games. So it was definitely a huge uh, transition. And I love my coach for even like, you know, letting me have that opportunity. So that story uh, kind of led into this whole 
you know, just recruiting process, information, every college coach ratings platform that we created. But that was how things kind of got inspired along the way. Fast. Okay. So then while you were still in school, you, if do I have this right, you had a project where you needed to kind of develop a, a, a company, if you will. And, and, and is that kind of how, where the impetus for LRT came together is, is so that you could help other athletes avoid some of the issues that you had? Yes, exactly. So okay. my senior year, we had an entrepreneurship class um, and we were able to create a company a fake company throughout the entire semester. And then at the end of the semester, we had to actually present it to um, venture capitalists, PE firm people, uh, you know, really successful people who are alumni or parents. And they basically sat on a panel and determined part of our grade, Um, you know, which is intimidating when you're a senior in college thinking that you have all the financials figured out. And then you have somebody who's a venture capitalist absolutely (laughs) ripping you apart. The the Um, same thing happens when you've been in business for decades and you go to pitch somewhere. Someone, there's always, you have to assume there's someone that knows more about what you're talking about than you do. And they're going to ask you those tough questions. Yep, That is absolutely true. Absolutely (laughs) true. So yeah, you know, we had two of the people come up up to us after. There was a group of four of us, and they said, "Hey, this is a really great idea. You should you should go with it. Like, if you ever want to go with it, here's our card." Um, I had my real person job, which you know, at the time, I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, great. This is awesome." But I'm going to go sit behind my my corporate desk and have a great time and get a, um, get a paycheck, right? Make sure. Yes, you, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And a couple months into my job, I thought, you know what? I really it couldn't get it off my mind. It was one of those things I couldn't fall asleep at night without thinking about it, just the different ways it would help. And I definitely was more passionate about it than I initially had had thought. So it was one of those things where I ended up just, you know, starting it on the side and couldn't sustain both and decided to kind of take a leap of faith into the unknown, um, just like your son is doing with uh, college <laughs> a little bit. And you know, from there, it's just been a whirlwind of emotions and ups and downs and everything else that any other entrepreneur kind of experiences along the way. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's a great, it's a great story. I, that step from, you know, sitting at the desk, getting a paycheck, uh, that steady thing where all your, you know, your family was probably happy. Oh, she's got a great job, <laughs> you know, this kind of thing. And, yep. and then, and then taking that leap is, is it's a huge risk. Uh, what, what was there an impetus? You just were you just not excited about what you were doing day to day that pushed you in uh, to starting LRT. Yeah, I mean, I was so I was working at Morgan Stanley in New York City, which is obviously a dream for most and myself included. And I absolutely loved Morgan Stanley. I loved everybody that I worked with. There was nothing in particular that was upsetting about my job. I could have, you know, I could still be sitting there today and probably would have had a happy life. Um, I think for me, the one thing that I always envisioned myself was maybe being a little bit more out there in public and kind of just being more involved with things. I have a father who is also an entrepreneur. He's started multiple companies, one being a company that's a manufacturing company that is injection molding. He's invested in tons of companies and he's kind of been on that on the go kind of thing. And he's always doing 20 different things at once. So I think kind of seeing him doing that. And then my mom starting her own fitness center and them always kind of being risk takers. Um, It was one of those things where it was an easy decision because they were super supportive. And I've also kind of learned from the best between both of them. So uh, I think just having conversations with them, you know, and them kind of being extremely supportive was one thing. And then the second thing being just not totally excited, like jumping out of my seat every single morning, um, for my job. And to me, that's always been, I don't know if it's a problem or not, but always been something that's important to me, especially with school. Um, even when I was taking classes in high school, there would be certain classes that I wasn't super excited about and I wasn't giving a hundred percent into, and I had to work harder at versus the ones that I loved. It almost came naturally to me. So, um, I think as long as I love what I'm doing, I'm always giving a hundred percent, uh, which I'm sure could be said for most people. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yes, it's the difference of between w- wanting to do it and knowing that you have to do it, right? Yes. And 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 as if you can, we talk about hacking our brains a lot here. But if you can hack your brain into wanting to do something, then it doesn't require discipline anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just mm-hmm. good to go. So yeah, right. I, I would say you, you know, I commend you for it. You really escaped employment 
which yes. I think is, <laughs> it's a hard thing. There's lots of people that sit there for 20 years thinking about it and then realize, oh, wow, you know, I, I got all, I got kids and a mortgage and this and that, and I'm not able to do it. So, so that's, gr- that's great. So, okay. About 10 minutes into the show, uh, tell us what you guys actually do at LRT Sports. Yeah. So first and foremost, we are a rating and review website for college coaches. So that means that we actually allow current and former college athletes to go on and rate their college coaches. And um, when they do that, they're verified on our end. We have a verification process that everybody has to go through to make sure that they are who they say they are because everybody takes their sports very seriously. And it's it's a very passionate topic for most. Um, But on the other hand, we actually post those reviews anonymously on the front end. So when the coach ratings go up, again, they're verified, but they're anonymous because we wanted to keep the athletes um, feeling comfortable and safe and not feeling like they could share their story without getting lashed back from a coach or an administration or anything else in between. Because again, college sports right now, especially you hear more and more stories of um, mental abuse or anything else in between. Um, and I think it's just really important for us to you know, protect the identities of those college athletes out there. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, so the coach rating service is, uh, you know, kind of the fundamental thing. Is, is there other areas that you've expanded into, or is that really the core of your business that you that you offer? Yeah, it's definitely I'd say like our bread and butter, but we we have other offerings as well. So we have um, a section called the Huddle on there where we actually write articles. Um, it's a culmination of kind of getting stories from other people similar to you guys. So we have a series called recruiting horror stories where people commit too early or they went to an overnight visit and somebody got drunk and lost their, uh, you know, scholarship offer or a parent ruined a scholarship offer for somebody or anything else in between. So we have stories like that, um, coach advice. So we actually talk to the college coaches on what they look for in a student athlete, um, talking to professional athletes, Olympians, and everybody else just kind of about the recruiting story and their advice and everything else um, in between. And I think the biggest thing for that too is also we provide resources for current college athletes too if they're looking to transfer or wanting to know what it's like to redshirt or um, just kind of anything to do with understanding college athletics. That's our tagline. So understanding college athletics is super important to us. And we also offer a Uh, membership where athletes are able to go on and kind of organize their recruiting process. There's a common misconception that we connect student athletes and coaches together, which we don't. Um, It's purely educational. It's all about organization, education, empowerment, um, working with mental health and everything else that kind of goes along with, again, college recruiting process, but also just being a college athlete in general. Yeah. I I really found that huddle area fascinating. And one of the things that I read that I had no idea was, you know, the benefits of getting an academic scholarship in addition to, you know, trying to get into a sports program, it kind of made you more marketable because you didn't use up so much of the budget from the athletic program. Uh, and, and I thought that was just, you know, it was brilliant. Yeah, there's that. And then there's things like division three and Ivy league, they don't offer, um, athletic scholarships per se, but there's a lot of like merit-based scholarships, academic scholarships and um, need-based and everything else that they kind of work around. And sometimes schools with huge endowments are able to um, grant student athletes money depending on circumstances or whatever else it may be. Each school, league, everything else in between has their own rules. But again, I always tell student athletes and parents, make sure that you're, you're kind of asking those questions when you're on campus and actually in the point of the process where you can have that re- conversation with the coach. Don't go out guns a blazing <laughs> conversation right. number one. Hey, what can you right. offer me? Um, but when you start to have those conversations and coaches are bringing up, you know, money or anything else like that, those are the kinds of questions that you need to be diving into. But absolutely, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity outside of just that athletic scholarship, and you know, a very very small percentage of athletes can, can even receive, but also just do receive your traditional division one full ride scholarship. That one thing that everybody wants is such a small, small percentage of athletes. So, you know, we're here to, you know, kind of teach that information and let people know that there's ways to get money. Um, It might not be your dream of that full ride D one scholarship, but also there's a lot of sports that don't even have the opportunity for that to happen. So um, that's what we're here for. Makes sense. 
Yeah, no, yeah, no that makes sense. Well, I mean, like, as with anything in the college process, you know, you you have some preconceptions, and they're always either incomplete or simply wrong. And and here's yet another part of this, and you fill in this gap. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and so you, I think you answered one of the questions I was going to ask you if, if your target customer was, you know, just high school students, but it sounds like you also uh, help college, you know, athletes as well once they're there, if they have, you know, if they want to transfer, do different things. I want, I want to talk about your revenue model. We're big fans of what we call a revenue stack here, of, you know, finding revenue in all different places. And uh, you mentioned the membership. So that's, is that your varsity membership that you have on the site? Um, and is that your main source of revenue for the business? Are there other areas or are you planning on adding additional areas? How does that work for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, you know, first and foremost is the varsity membership, but we even more so than that, we actually do workshops. Um, Uh, Obviously, pre-corona, they were mainly in person. So going to high schools, um, camps, showcases, training facilities, and actually just speaking about the recruiting process, setting up a plan, uh, what you need to be looking for in a coach, in a school, um, even in a school outside of athletics, because again, you know, my story is based in, I loved my school so much, so I decided to stay. So I'm a huge believer in going to the school for the school more so than the athletics. Um, but, you know, doing those speaking engagements has been another really great source of revenue for us. And that actually came up by accident. Um, we weren't planning on doing it. We were at an athletic director conference and an AD came up to us and was like, hey, do you guys do uh, seminars? And I kind of said, on what? And they were like, well, like <laughs> recruiting process. And I was like, yes, we do. And they were like, well, how much? <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, we do. And, and uh, they said, well, how much does it cost? And at the time, uh, obviously, yeah. I, at this point, I have no idea. I'm 22. I have no idea what the market is for that. So I just go, it's free if you pay for room and board. Travel and logic. Oh, travel yeah. and logic. Yep. There you go. And the school happened to be in Hawaii. So, yeah, nice. that's always fun. <laughs> um, that's So, you know, it morphed into after Corona kind of doing these engagements online. So virtual workshops and everything else. Um, And then, you know, you have your traditional ad revenue and, uh, you know, we've dabbled in doing different things, which I also didn't see this coming, but with uh, our research. So since we do have a survey with a target market that a lot of people want to get a hold of, there are some companies that actually pay to add in an an additional question or two to find out. um, a little bit of insight into the student athletes' minds. Um, and then when those are on the rating, obviously we're transparent with the student athletes. It's an optional question. They can choose to fill it out or not. Um, and then that's another source of revenue that we actually never saw coming. Yeah. No, that's great. So you mentioned the the coronavirus shutdown. So did you, uh, how was that transition for you? Did, did you just seamlessly roll right into, okay, well, we can do, you know, video workshops for your team. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of, uh, uh, you know, athletic directors looking for how, how do I support my team when we're not playing? Right. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's, so you mentioned that doing that, is that, that's what you started working on now? Yeah. Um, you know, we got really lucky because our entire company is remote. So everybody that works for me right now is remote. Um, so it was a blessing in disguise for us because nothing really changed as far as our day to day is concerned. Um, the biggest upset obviously was having a lot of canceled events, Some of those were just completely canceled. Others were able to kind of transition to the virtual workshop um, portion of things, which is great. Um, But yeah, I don't, I'm not sure it was seamless. I think it's different trying to market a virtual workshop than it is an in-person workshop and not everybody's fully on the virtual bandwagon quite yet. Um, But for some of those people that were a little bit ahead of the time or have some foresight into at least seeing like, you know what, Hey, I kind of have to hop on this bandwagon. Um, so I think there was some convincing to do. The marketing was a little bit different, so it wasn't entirely seamless. Um, but I think it was definitely, we were way more well suited for it than a lot of other people only because our entire company by nature is forced to be tech savvy. We're always trying to see what apps integrate with Slack the best or Google drive. And we're just always trying to stay up on that. So luckily for us, it wasn't it wasn't the end of the world. Um, but at the same time, let, you know, people right now don't want to be spending money. Um, we have a low price point of nine ninety nine a month for our, um, for our membership. And, you know, a lot of the times we're offering it for seven, eight, nine dollars because we have run, um, 
discounts and everything. But at the same time, people aren't wanting to spend extra money right now. And they're not spending money on sports because all sports are shut down. So yeah. it definitely, it definitely was an impact. Yeah. yeah. It's, a ch- it's a challenge. I, I, I think that the opportunity for you with the online courses and, uh, and, the setting things up to where people can log in and get, I mean, I think it's huge and, uh, could, could be a whole nother, you know, business almost for you guys going forward. Cause you know, some smaller schools that maybe you're not going to be able to go out to and have these workshops, but individual parents could, you know, sign up online and uh, watch the, the, the workshop would be great. Cool. Right. Right. Exactly. That's great. So one of the things that, you know, when I look at that, having gone through all the stuff and the headaches of the paperwork and everything with schools, if I had a student athlete, it, it just seems like such a no-brainer to, to, okay, who do I get to help and how do I do it? Your, your services seem like just, okay, there's no barrier, but I know there must be. And you mentioned, I know right now, people are a little you know tight with their cash, but I mean, are you what barriers do you face when you're trying to convince you know, either individuals or athletic directors and schools to use your services? And then how do you overcome those? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is not necessarily for the athletic directors and schools because they kind of get it and the ADs especially get all the questions. So anybody else I could take over those questions, they're happy to give it uh, to yeah, us. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, just having parents and really parents, but also athletes understand that um, a, you don't need to spend a fortune on connecting with college coaches because you could do it all for free through, you know, the athletic websites and, and college questionnaires. Um, but B, that we don't do that, that we're not the ones that are providing the direct contact between college coaches and the student athletes. I mm. think it's um, a kind of quick and easy way to, you know, they, I think they think it's a quick and easy way to front load a lot of the work onto those other platforms. Um, but something again, that I mentioned before is you could kind of do all that for free. Um, every school has, you know, the information about the college coaches. And if not, there's a recruiting questionnaire up there for each sport that they all get that they want you to fill out anyway. Um, so I think just letting people know that like, Hey, um, we're not connecting coaches and players is like the one thing that we almost have to say before we can even tell them uh, who we are. Um, just cause our, our industry is like pretty slow with just keeping up with the times. I mean, even just like recruiting with statistics in general and just sports tech and everything else, it's, it's a little bit on the slower side of things. And, you know, club teams aren't use, utilizing all the resources that they could be using, um, uh, even from a training perspective. And, you know, those things have a tendency to be really expensive. And I understand that, but there's just always this, well, you're connecting college coaches and players. There's a million websites that do it. We already have a hundred pitches from those, from Uh, those websites. We don't want it. And it's like, well, that's not what we even do. Yeah. You're you're not an agent. Yeah. 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 So I think that's the biggest thing for us is fighting that just common misconception of, everything to do with recruiting is connect player and coach. And there's a lot of other great companies out there that are also trying to fight that same narrative. And I've had conversations with a lot of them. Um, There's a company uh, called true exposure and then another one called route. And they're actually getting more into using statistics for recruiting and comparing, you know, sizes of different players, seeing which um, divisions that you're actually going to fit in based on your size, weight, 40 yard dash and everything else. Now this is mainly specifically for football because you have all those stats and combine numbers and everything else. And obviously sure. football is a very, um, we'll call it body centric sport where it's, if you're too small for football, you're not going to be able to play in a certain division. Um, but I think, you know, as we see a shift into more tech within sports, hopefully that, that misconception kind of changes. That's cool. It sounds like you're in, in the right place. At, at the right time to take advantage of that, uh, that technological, you know, up, upswing, if you will. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think there's a lot of ratings websites out there where, I mean, we're rating everything or Uber rides or, uh, just products that we use. Amazon, you know, encourages you to rate the products that you just right. get and everything else. So I think, um, ratings culture has definitely shifted over the past, you know, 10 years as well. Um, there's rate my professor, rate my teacher, rate my lawyer, rate my dentist, <laughs> rate my this, rate yeah, my that. Yeah, yeah. So well, and, and, all I mean, as, it, soon yeah. as, as soon as right. you explained that early on, it was like, oh, so this is like rate my coach. Okay. I grok like no problem. Yes. Yep. Yes, yep. exactly. Cool. Exactly. So that, that's kind of where things come into play. And I think it's a really cool time to be in this industry. And I think, especially with, um, an external push for, uh, you know, mental health and everything else. I think that it's, it's a good time to, to be here. And, yeah. 
Uh, and I say external because NCAA has no specific rules or indications on mental health or coach abuse or anything else mm-hmm. that they have laid laid out in their bylaws. Um, so we're happy to be here for people to be able to feel empowered to share their stories, but also um, for people to read those stories so that they're aware of what they're getting into. And a time to celebrate those really great coaches out there that might be in some of those smaller divisions at smaller schools um, that, you know, just, you know, can win championship after championship, most winning as coach in D3 or whatever it may be that we kind of want to celebrate and let people know, hey, it doesn't matter if you're not going D1, you could be winning a championship, a national yeah. championship, a league yeah. championship or whatever else it may be. Well, and get get out of it what you're looking for, right? That experience. I mean, uh, you know, the funnel is so narrow of, you know, athletes that are going to go on to be professional at whatever anyway. Uh, yes. I, I think that's a, it's, it's a, it's a great, uh, it's really a great thing to point out. Um, so he, it seems like to be a, a huge resource. So one of the questions we ask every single guest that comes on the show uh, is about mistakes. We, we really love, we're big fans of mistakes probably because I've made so many. I don't think Dave has really made very many, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but you know, they teach us so much. We kind of call them tuition around here, especially when you look back on them. So setting up LRT and, and, you know, getting things going, what would you say was the best mistake you made, the one that really stuck with you and taught you a valuable lesson? Yeah, I think this is a great question, by the way. Um, I have a story for you, as, as I know you love them. Um, but we, when I first started LRT, again, I was 22 years old, uh, kind of going into everything, being a little bit naive, and decided to kind of hire a company to build out our website that I didn't do too much research into, which looking back, I'm like, how is that even possible? I don't know. My brain wasn't all screwed on at that point. I'm not really sure. Um made a really quick decision just because I wanted to turn over the website quickly. And I ended up getting um, just kind of really screwed in the process from a monetary perspective, from a perspective of every time there was a change that needed to happen, even if it was like changing the font, it took like, you know, two weeks. Um, And I went into a big meeting sat down, went to go pull up the website and the website had actually crashed. And I had no proof of the website even existing in this meeting. And it was extremely embarrassing. But from that, I actually, you know, was in the meeting contacting the people, Hey, got to get this up ASAP. Oh, it's going to be, you know, a couple weeks. And I'm like a couple weeks of a website being down. That seems a little wonky. Um, and in the meeting, there was a woman who, and she said, Hey, is your, is your website housed on um, WordPress? And at the time it was. Um, and I said, yes. And she said, well, my husband is actually a, a computer programmer specifically for WordPress, but he does other platforms as well. Do you want him to just like take a look, like just pop in there, see if he can do anything. And I was like, honestly, at this point, I'm willing to do whatever. Um, <laughs> he got in there and fixed it about in about two minutes. And then after that, I kept in touch with him. He's actually our CTO now and has been our CTO wow. for years. Yes. That's cool. I know, awesome. right? Yeah. So he's been our CTO for years now. And honestly, that's the best mistake ever. Um, because if I did some more research into that company and didn't have my website crash for that meeting, I wouldn't have found them. So that yeah. was definitely yeah. a blessing in disguise. And it also taught me that I need to actually like ask for references and do more research into the people that we're hiring, especially when a website is your product. Um, but yeah, I guess, true. you know, at 22, I just wasn't really thinking that through. Well, 22, you know, you have this, everything's going to be awesome and uh, <laughs> everything's going to work and you're not going to have those kind of problems. It's, it's, uh, right. Exactly. I can, exactly. Yeah, I remember thinking that way too. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's great. So I, I had, when, when you were talking before a little bit of, about uh, students and parents and things, and I, and I have one of these questions, that it's, what is the biggest misconception that student athletes and or parents have about the process of recruiting and finding the right fit? And you might have already answered it, but maybe just put a finer point on it. Uh, I just think that, you know, we talked about, pre, you know, preconceived things at the beginning of the show. What is, is there a misconception that, that you kind of see over and over again? Yeah, honestly, I think there's a lot, um, unfortunately. And, and again, that's something that we're trying to fight against on a daily basis, but you know, we mentioned it earlier, so I won't get too much into it. Number one thing being everybody's going to get a full ride scholarship. Um, that's number one. But, you know, since we already talked about that, I think the second biggest thing is, um, you know, it's kind of a two pronged thing, but a, that you have to 
like commit to a school early and B, that that school has to be like a total like name brand school that you think that you were like born to go to from, you know, childbirth. And, you know, people could be huge Clemson fans, but that doesn't necessarily mean that 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 Clemson is the right school for you. Um, Clemson on TV is very different than Clemson in person. And any school is very different than what your preconceived notions are of it. Um, Schools change throughout the years. Schools will be different from when your parents went there. They'll be different from when your cousins went there. And they're always evolving. They're always adapting. Um, and I think there's very few schools out there and, you know, I could argue in the Ivy league, but there's very, very few schools out there that actually stick to their, um, same traditions year over year. And, um, technology plays a huge role in that. But I think when you're looking at a school, um, especially for athletics, just trying to be as open-minded as possible. I hear all the time student athletes who ignore coaches of divisions that they think that they're too good for or leagues that they think they're too good for. And, you know, the one offer that they have that they're hanging on to a coach ends up, you know, getting fired, quitting, um, stops recruiting them. A uh, parent does something weird on a recruiting trip and, you know, <laughs> the relationship is ruined yeah. and then they've ignored those coaches. And then it's like, uh Oh, I've kind of burned all my bridges and now I'm not getting recruited anywhere because I'll tell you what coaches are talking all the time in between divisions, in between leagues. Uh. And, they know what's up with all the players because they're kind of talking to each other too. Like, Hey, are you, are you going to take this kid? Or are you not? Um, so, so they're always talking as well. I mean, there's one girl that I know. Um, I talked to a coach one time and, and she said that she went to a showcase, was recruiting her for soccer, shows up. All these coaches are sitting around to watch her good player. They sit down to watch her. They're talking. Next thing you know, they're all kind of sharing like, oh, she sent me this in the email. And it was like, hmm, that's weird. She sent me this in the email too. And uh, ended up copying and pasting the same email to like, let's call it 10 different you know, programs. All 10 of them got up, walked away, went on to the next player. Um, so I think just like the common misconception sure. of like, I'm supposed to go to this place or I have to go to this place when there's so many variables in college sports um, – that, you know, that, that's not, that's not gonna, it's not how it's going to roll. And, yeah. you know, it's great advice. That's okay. Yeah. It makes it, perfect it, sense. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. That, it's, it's huge. It's huge. I want to make my son listen to this <laughs> <We're not talking. laughs> for awesome. sure, man. Cause I, you know, they're all, they're just so into it. I'm going to go here he, forever. He was going to Maryland. There was just no way, you know, anywhere else. And I'm going to play lacrosse in Maryland. I'm like, dude, you're eight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's and that's not to say, trust me. I mean, look yeah. at Baker Mayfield. There's people out there that are just destined to do those things and, yeah, and shock yeah. the system and be that underdog. And I'm never saying don't shoot for those goals. If you sure. want to go to Maryland, email that college coach, try and get yeah. in contact with them, go to a showcase that they're at. But if they're not recruiting you after that, or they're not talking to you, you can't like quite literally go bang down on their door and say, Hey, right. you have to recruit me because they just might not be interested. And again, that's okay. Um, there's, you know, so that's many, a lot of things in life. There. And, yeah. Right. You, you, if you get yourself emotionally committed before yep. you know that it's a done deal, well, that that shifts the leverage picture. Of course. Best. Right. You know, it is now you're you're no longer in control and that's not a good position to be in either. There's a life lesson to learn about that. But. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, it's really great. It's, it's just some awesome information and some great information today. Uh, I, I want to ask you one more question. I, and I want to kind of take you back to the beginning when you were just on the edge of jumping off and starting your own company. We have a lot of people that listen to this show that are really at that stage, aspirational. Um, you know. So for those listeners that are that are thinking, man, maybe I shouldn't do it. You know, I, I don't want to take the risk. What would you tell them? You know, If you had to give yourself some advice when you were thinking of you know, starting out, if your parents, you know, these folks' parents maybe weren't entrepreneurs and they're, uh, you know, awesome, just, you know, paycheck folks that got it and look at them and go, you're crazy. You know, what, what, what tidbit of advice would you have given yourself? Yeah. I think if you have like your, let's assume that you have your proof of concept and, you know, you know that you're going to make some money from it and that it's, it's a valid idea. Um, I think the number one piece of advice is, it's never going to be the right time. You know, you, some people might be sitting back saying, Oh, you know, I have my kid's birthday coming up. I really want to wait until <laughs> after that. And then something else happens and then something else happens. And then next thing you know, it's five years later and you're stuck on this thing and it's, it kind of gets ahead of you. Um, so I think, you know, just don't wait until the right time to do something because it's never the right time. Um, as again, as long as you have your concept proved and, 
you know that you can make money, generate leads and, and kind of actually create a viable business for yourself, then I, I think just go for it as soon as you can. Um, I, you know, it's just one of those things that you just kind of have to take the leap and, and throw all of your eggs into one basket. And there's going to be plenty of people listening where, you know, they've had failures are going to have failures, but you're, to your guys point, um, that's kind of like a really good currency. I think you called it tuition uh, to have and to have those failures and and you'll learn and you'll pivot and you'll do a million different things, but don't wait for the right time because I'll tell you what, there's never a right time to do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's great <laughs> advice. It is really yeah. great advice. You know, Kirsten, I mean, we, you've given us so much information, not only just uh, about you know your business experience and everything, but just you know anybody who's got a kid or you know into sports. It's just invaluable. Uh, thank you again for coming on the show. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and learn more about LRT sports? Yeah, you could just go to lrtsports.com. We're also on like every social media platform ever, TikTok being our newest one that we're learning. Um, wow. But LRT Sports is for everything. And then if you just go to lrtsports.com and scroll down to the uh, contact us, that's a great way to just fill out that quick little form, shoot, shoot us an email. Um, or you can kind of DM us on any platform. We're, we're very responsive crew. Um, so we're always on all of our social media. So whatever is easiest for whoever's out there, to be honest with you, um, uh, but yeah, social media, YouTube, whatever it may be. Yeah. And go check out the huddle up there at lrtsports.com. Uh, there's some great information. I mean, I found, like I mentioned earlier, and there's just a ton of great info up there. Uh, it's a great resource. So thank you again. We really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you guys having me. And that was awesome. Gosh. Gosh. Yeah, she was great. I, I loved her enthusiasm and I loved her passion, but I also really respect uh, backing that up with the data and the and the realism about, you know, oh, you know, we're trying to tell these kids and these parents don't, uh, you know, focus in on just one school or right. one coach, right. you know, especially if they're not, you know, turning your calls or you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I really learned a lot. I think, especially right now with so many you know, with programs shut down in schools, this this will be a great show for people that have gone through this and are going to be going through it, you know, in the fall. Well, those, ready yeah, for the next year. Those right. poor people that have to, you know, as much as it sucks for you and me and our kids more so, uh, having right. to kind of make their final decisions. Some kids are going to have to make all of their decisions based on what they can see online and via video conference and phone calls. I mean, yeah, you know, those those apps are due in the fall and they yeah. may not be able to do those college tours either. So, yeah, it's, it's, like, that's, true. that's all, right. All of this stuff. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it is yep. crazy. I've got a question for you, Dave. Yeah, what man. does it cost? Our, what does it cost our listeners to hear this show? It costs you nothing. All you got to do is listen, subscribe, and That's listen. Great. That's it. There you go. Yeah. The, the one thing we would ask of you is to go leave us a review. Leave us a five star review at the Apple Podcast or wherever you listen to us. It helps us tremendously to keep delivering this content that we hope you love. Uh, go to businessshow.co slash reviews uh, wherever you listen to the show. Lastly, we have a returning guest coming back with us next week with a brand new idea and a brand new company. You don't want to miss this update. If you're a serial entrepreneur, this guy has, uh, you know, and if you have anything, if your business needs anything to do with logistics, this guy is a master. So uh, we're happy to welcome, welcome him back. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. All right, folks. Me well, too. That's uh, that's a wrap for this one. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for visiting our, our sponsor, of course, at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. Another cost of the show. And uh, keep living that charmed life. 